Come here, let me show you. Uh. All right. So, before we go to the gym, a couple disclaimers. I'm not a workout expert. I am not a fitness guru. I am not a nutrition expert. I am not a Mr. Olympia times 11. This isn't even a workout channel. This video was originally planned for a handful of people who were interested in to see how I worked out. And I was gonna post it in celebration for me reaching 5,000 subscribers. But for some weird reason, I think somebody hacked my YouTube page. Fast forward to this week, a whole one week later, we're at 20,000 subs. What? How? You guys are awesome, really, seriously. I see all the comments and I'm gonna be honest with you. I want to kiss you. So because that happened, I threw in some questions I got from my Instagram DMs, mostly music related because this is still a drum channel, and I answered them during my workout. All right, let's go to the gym. Thank you so much again. Where are we at? In the gym. In the gym. Oh, ooh. <laughs> Look at that form. <laughs> so as you can see, we're taking our pre-workout. We got our spray bottles. <laughs> We sip this pre-workout. He's got his little D fuel there. He's so cute. I'm gonna answer a question because this still is a drum channel. The first question that I got is what type of cymbals did I use? That's the question I get the most out of everybody. All right, guys, check it out. So I usually only use three cymbals. Well, I guess technically four because the hi-hats are two, okay? I use two ride cymbals and a pair of hi-hats. I'll start off over here, okay? We got the 16 inch extra dry medium thin hi-hat by Byzantz. Now we got over here, monophonic ride cymbal by Byzantz. Minor cymbals, these are all minor cymbals. As you can see, I have two rivets installed. They were installed by one of my good friends who worked in a library. Because let's be honest, if I installed them myself, I probably would have broke something. Now we're gonna move over here and we have the 21 inch Big Apple Dark Ride. Since so many of you voted for chest and back, today we're going to work out chest and back. So I work out six days a week. Mondays we have chest and back, Tuesdays we have shoulders and arms, Wednesdays we have legs, and then we repeat the whole process. And then Sundays we take rest days. I wouldn't recommend, as a beginner, going in and working out six days a week. Maybe go three days on, one day off, or two days on, one day off, however you want to do it. But since today is the first chest and back of this week, it's the heavier day, so there's going to be a lot of pressing movements. The next chest and back, which would be Thursday, would consist of a lot of flying motions, you know? Fly, free bird. So let's get to it. <laughs> What's up, dudes? Protein. Jesus. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is warm up. You can do whatever you want for warm ups. This is a great example of a warm up set. Come here, come here, young man. Hey. Okay, stop that. Look how much weight I got. Very light, but we're trying to pre-exhaust the muscles. You understand? Get the blood flowing. Respect the weight. Quality reps equals quality sex. <clears throat> now since today we're working out our chest and back, and we want to be very time efficient, we're gonna be supersetting everything, right? So after this warm-up set with the chest, we're gonna go over there by the pull-ups, do some pull-ups for the back. Follow me. <laughs> How many reps? That doesn't matter, man. Warm up. No, seriously, it doesn't matter how many reps you do, how many sets you do. Sometimes you could be warming up for like two sets. <laughs> Other times you might warm up for like 10 sets. It's it really, you really just go off a of field. It's called a warm up exercise for a reason. Break my finger with your chest. Ooh. All right, so next question. Okay, so how do you play what you hear in your mind in real time? Well, to be quite honest with you, I'm not really hearing a lot in my mind. I'm not even thinking. Sometimes I even surprise myself and play something I've never played before, and I expand off of that idea. Actually, Saxologic, what do you think? Well, if you if you practice the Mario Kart lick in all 12 keys, you can do different versions of the Mario Kart. But seriously, man, working your fundamentals so much that sometimes things just come out naturally. You'll be playing something 
so quick and so fast for example maybe you're playing like a double triple quintuple at paradiddle and, you, and like it just naturally comes out because you've done the time you spent those hours in the practice room and you were shedding all that stuff and when you go out and play or when you're just playing free it just comes out naturally because you have the facility and the fundamentals down so the first exercise we'll be doing is the barbell bench press so we're going to go ahead and warm up with just the bar and then right after the bench press we're going to superset with a reverse grip barbell row so come here let me show you uh. all right all right so we're warming up even though there's no weight on it you're still respecting the weight i respect you making sweet love to the weight so he can feel his muscles working because if your muscles ain't working then the girls won't be twerking this is what you don't want to do all right now we're going to put some weight on all right so we said six to eight reps so since the first set you know first heavy set we want to try to get eight reps obviously but each set we're gonna go up in weight okay <clears throat> By doing a reverse grip, he's targeting his lats right here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling pretty weak today, but we still got the big girls on. Lightweight, baby! I'm feeling it. Keep in mind, if you can't hit the required rep range by the end of the set, then that's good. It means you're getting stronger. You don't want six to eight reps to feel too easy. <laughs> All right, so the next question that we have, what is your favorite RPG style video game? Does RuneScape count? If it does, then don't mess with my Rune 2H. All right, so the next exercise is... Mm. Oh. There are gonna be three sets of flat dumbbell bench press supersetted with wide grip pull downs. Point the camera over there now. Um, okay, <laughs> since we just did a variation of a flat bench press, obviously with the barbell, for the next exercise, we're only gonna go for eight to 12 reps, right? Lighter rep range, but it gives us more room to actually control and feel and make sweet love to them weights. Also, be honest with yourself. If you can do more than 12, then grow up. Challenge yourself, just like you do in the practice room. Follow me. All right, before we get into the next exercise, I'm gonna answer another question. This person asked me, do you listen to emo music? Let me take you on a flashback to eighth grade. You see, in eighth grade, I used to date this emo chick, and she introduced me to all these bands like My Chemical Romance, Taking Back Sunday, Yellow Card, Green Day, Blink-182. Well, I wouldn't really consider Blink-182 to be emo. I'm not gonna lie to you, ever since then, I'm pretty hooked but you know i don't really listen to it that much anymore but one of my guilty pleasures whenever i have free time i like to go in my little drum room and make my own emo songs all 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is an incline press and then a machine row. Doing four sets, once again, six to eight reps. The gym recently did some rearranging, so now we have to walk all the way from there to here. But it's cool though. I'm gonna get in front of me. With this exercise right here, you can choose to do one arm or two arms. Why is he working out? Cool. All right, your turn. Time to walk all the way to Narnia. Look how focused he is. Why is there a spoon right here? A spork. A spork right here. Someone got some blue tangles today. They're eating. Sick. All right, so next question. What is your daily practice routine? Well, come here and have a seat. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't really have a daily practice routine, but I do have some things I do more than others. Like for example, I play the records a lot. I just mess around on the drums a lot. I like to make my own songs and, and play with them a lot. As for the next exercise, the incline hammer strength press, we're just gonna do three sets, eight to 12 reps, and then three sets of that machine right there, the hammer strength pull down machine. Right there, right there. zoom in on it. <laughs> All right, it's time to work out. Yes, sir. Let's stop messing around, man. I hated that. Remember, you want to pull from your elbows and not your biceps. By doing that, you get more focus in the lats. All right, let's finish with these questions. Are you a formally studied musician? Do you meal prep with counting calories and doing the math on proteins or do you just eat a well-balanced diet and play? All right, to answer your first question, yes and no. I started off learning on my own and then eventually when I got to middle school, I got a teacher to teach me about rudiments and stuff. As far as meal prepping goes and counting calories, I used to be really hardcore about that stuff. I had the whole app of MyFitnessPal and I would count by the ounce, chicken breast, and rice but after doing that for so long you kind of remember how to eyeball like nine ounces of chicken nine ounces of beef so if you are planning to do it i do recommend like downloading my fitness pal it's free tracking all your food and your calories that way count all your macros do whatever macro nutrient ratio you like to do some people like doing the keto thing some people like doing high protein um high carb do whatever that works for you at the end of the day if you're in a caloric deficit you're gonna lose weight if you're in a surplus, you're gonna get fat. My question for your upcoming video. Ow. My problem is when I'm playing in a gig, I don't know how to play chops or fills fluently. I can practice all weeks, some sticking, some patterns, but at the same time, I forget all the patterns and I end up doing some shitty fills. How can I fix that? Greetings from Mexico. You're now one of my biggest drum influence. <laughs> I love you. All right, so here's the thing about practice. If you practice in a room all day, you're gonna sound like you practice in a room all day. It sounds to me like you haven't played that many live shows. I remember having this problem too. I would go out to jam sessions or, or stuff with my friends and I and I'll show up to the gig like, oh yeah, man, I'm about to play some sick chops. And I'd get on the drum set and I'd be like, mm. Mm. can you relate? Yes. So yeah, man, only way to get good at that kind of stuff is to keep performing. Literally, it's it's an experience thing. Performing is way different than practicing. Your your mind's in a different place. All right, let's go see if they're closed. They definitely are closed.